Hi everyone, how's it going? Today I invite you to grab a cup of coffee while we talk about a collection that I never talked about here on the channel. Today I'll be presenting Canterbury Leather Bound Classics. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. In this channel we talk about beautiful classic books that are made to last. So, Canterbury Leather Bound Classics. As they state on their website, Canterbury Classics publishes classic works of literature in what they call fresh and modern formats. I must confess that I'm not a big fan of some of the covers, and we all know how important covers are, right? To me, the illustrations on these covers clash against the traditional look of these books. I would definitely prefer a more subdued design, but I get what they wanted to do, and in the end, it's a matter of taste. I got these books as birthday presents, but I got to choose the titles from the collection and I confess that I have never been interested in this collection before, but these books here definitely won me over. And in this video I am going to talk about positive and negative points. This is a collection that has pleased me a lot since I won it and had an opportunity to examine it closely. So even if they have covers that I don't enjoy much, I am enjoying the collection a lot, it has many positive aspects. Here you have a collection of leather-bound books. I am not a fan of leather, but we all know that most book collectors are. They all have these pretty golden gilded edges, I love that. Another plus, ribbon markers. And this is the kind of thing that I love. Gilded edges and ribbon markers. I hate having to use other kinds of bookmarkers. And I keep losing them. I find them so annoying while I'm reading. As I told you, I don't like the cover design. I think that leather covers should only have the title or some other debossed decoration. Printing busy designs over leather usually gets ugly. But again, it's a matter of taste. But there are exceptions, of course. Well, they all have decorated end papers, as you may see, and all the edges of the books are gilded, and to me, that's a big plus. It not only looks shiny and beautiful, but it protects the text block. Since I always comment on ribbon markers, it is worth saying that they are of excellent quality and they match the illustrated end papers nicely. In the end of the day, I like the collection. These are nice, durable books for a nice and fair price. Now, let's take a look inside. The paper is not too thin, but definitely thin. They are not books you will carry around, but they are not too heavy. All of them have an introduction about the author and the works, I have read almost all the introductions in these editions here and I can say that they are great introductions, they do their job nicely. The font size may vary from title to title, because all the books have no more than 900 and something pages. I'll place them close to each other for you to see. Even with this variation, the size is satisfactory for me, but I know that this issue is far from unanimous because some people just need big fonts. And the text block is printed on a cream color paper in a more yellowish color than we usually find, and by the way, very comfortable to read. On the top of this pile, you may see a Library of America book that also has cream color paper. Canterbury is almost yellow in comparison. I find it charming and, as I told you, comfortable to read. The paper is not as smooth and silky as I would like, but yeah, I have some peculiar preferences when it comes to books, I'm sure you understand. But the paper is okay. The majority of these books are non-illustrated, but there are exceptions. They are printed in China. And here we have inexpensive titles that are well-made, a great deal for the money, in my opinion. The majority of the titles are bind-ups, but they also have a few single titles but nowadays I'm gravitating more towards bind-ups and that's because of the lack of shelf space 
And due to the fact that I have been trying really hard to acquire only titles that I do not have yet. Well, so far I own 7 books in this collection. Here we have them. First, Jules Verne. Four novels. It contains Five Weeks in a Balloon, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Around the World in 80 Days, and Journey to the Center of the Earth. All books in this collection have the same suggested price, but you may find real bargains online. Here you may see the paper in detail, and it's okay. I also have Iliad and Odyssey. Well, this is a translation by Samuel Butler. I'll be showing you only one page of each edition, so you can see the font size in case you're interested in some of these editions. And by the way, thank God these stickers come off easily without leaving a mark. And here we have H. G. Wells, six novels, The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, The War of the Worlds, The First Man in the Moon, and The Food of the Gods. I was really tempted to get this one, because here we have so many H. G. Wells works, not only the most famous. And I also got Stevenson, seven novels, with Treasure Island, Prince Otto, Strange Case of Dr. Jacko and Mr. Hyde, Kidnapped, The Black Arrow, The Master of Ballantry, and David Belfer. You see, I currently feel that I already have many of the most established novels by my favorite authors, and now it has become a challenge to get interesting copies of less famous books. So, this is another plus about these kind of bound up editions. Here we have a book that I was really looking forward to own Le Morte d'Arthur, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by Sir Thomas Mallory. I must confess that I wanted this title from another collection, Knickerbocker Classics. I always prefer cloth bound books. But nowadays it has been so complicated to buy imported books here in Brazil that I was satisfied with this one. And, at the end of the day, they are quite similar. And I also got Mark Twain, five novels. Guys, this year I read Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn for the first time, and it was an unforgettable experience, so you'll be seeing a lot of Mark Twain on this channel from now on. And this copy contains The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Prince and the Pauper, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, and the tragedy of Pudding Hell Wilson. And last but not least, the book I wanted the most from this collection. Here we have Classic Works from Women. It contains different kinds of works from 24 women. It starts with an Agatha Christie novel that I really enjoyed. I have read it recently. It was my third Agatha Christie book and I really liked it. Here we have a letter from Jane Austen, a selection of poems from the Bronte sisters, a novel from Elizabeth Gasco that I haven't read yet, but I'm currently reading, and a lot of works from women writers that I don't know yet and I'm very excited to read. So this is a very interesting anthology and I'm really excited to go through it. I started reading it as soon as I got it. So guys, overall, I guess that if you manage to forgive this busy cover design, This is a great collection, in my opinion. Despite the majority of them being bind-ups, they are not overly heavy, and even if they are a bit tacky on the outside, the design of the pages is very pleasing to the eye, and in short, nice selection of classics, durable books, and fair price. So guys, let me know down below your thoughts on this collection. Do you like it or not? I'm looking forward to reading your opinions, as always. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all in the next video and thanks for watching. Bye!